This is your last we're probably going to show you how to kick off the Kickstarter gear uh, here as well as we're going to probably need tool to be able to get in so we'll have to probably take out all your uh, Kickstarter mechanism as well. We'll show you how. And if you remember our previous video we showed you pretty much how to take out the uh, cylinder head and cylinder unit so we won't cover it in this video again but you can also review that video to see how we can take off the cylinder head as well as the cylinder housing, the pistons, everything. Uh, so that way, if you're ready, we can go ahead and show you how to jump start. Pretty much, we're going to go and show you how to take off the stator cover. Uh, pretty much, the flywheel cover, the fan, as well as the timing cover, and then also the left hand crankcase. In order for us to take out the crankshaft itself, the whole internal unit that has the arm stretching out, uh, we're going to have to take out that starter gear like we mentioned earlier. So here we go. We're going to go and start now to take off the uh, fan cover for our flywheel. And this will help us remove most of the parts internally. Uh, so we're going to be exposed to seeing all of it. Well, first of all, we're going to need is an 8 millimeter socket. It's just going to be two, pretty much two uh, bolts holding it. One here, and then one on the lower bottom right there. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and open everything up here. There we go, it's going to 8 millimeter. There. And we're going to keep it in this housing. That way we won't lose the bolts. But this is the size of it. You want to see another one's the same. There we go. Try to get my, not my finger in on the way. Okay, this looks loose now. So we can pull it out. It's the same bolt size. You can see right there. There we go. <clears throat> we'll put this aside. We'll put the bolts into the sockets. Just kind of have it lay there. Then we're going to take out the, the fan. The fan just has four bolts holding it. And you're going to need a special tool to remove the flywheel after you remove the 17 millimeter um, uh, nut that's holding it on as well. And I'll show you that tool in just a second. Again, the plastic uh, housing screws like these, it's best just to go ahead and uh, put them back into its proper place so you'll have them when you're ready to have them out again. Uh, these, what size these are, they're all the same. They're about this length. Okay, here we go. We'll put these actually on the ground. Give us a little bit more room. Okay, there we go. Now you have this one, you'll have to hit it with an impact wrench. So let me go and get an impact wrench. 17 millimeter socket. There's our 17 millimeter socket right here. 17 millimeter. So we're going to go and get an impact wrench for that. Or an impact driver. Well, impact driver again has a little bit more like a hammerhead looking and just said to reverse you don't want to okay now it's coming okay now you got the bullet there's also a washer in here as well uh, if you can't get the washer out for right now that's fine you might be able to tilt it there we go there we go got the washer out now this thing will not come off by itself it's just stuck on there by magnet so it's very hard to get off. You can't plow it out. So this is where the tool comes in. This is a special tool. It's called a flywheel remover tool. And I'm going to show you pretty much uh, what I use right here. I use this one right here. This is a, and what it is is reverse thread. And you're going to have to actually screw it. Lefty loosey righty tighty doesn't apply. If you move it to the left, it actually screws into the housing. But we're going to need to make it uh, retract in a little bit because we're going to put pressure onto the, one of the crankshaft's uh, arm, which is the stud here. And then we're going to force it out. Again, only thing holding right now is not the thread itself. It's just a magnetic force. This is just a solid piece of magnet internal that spins around. And then you have your stator, which you can, we're going to expose in just a second. Okay, now that we have it retract as much as we can, you can see it's all retract in there. About a good maybe inch. We're going to go ahead and turn it to the left. There we go, screw it in. And then this takes, takes a 17 millimeter, the same as your uh, uh, bolt here. So, 
You could do it by hand, or you could take a torque wrench. I keep on calling it a torque wrench. Uh, you know, impact driver. <laughs> there we go. See how it's coming out? There we go. Now it's exposed. And that's all it is on the other side right here. Okay, so again, keep in mind, righty is loosening it. It's very, sometimes hard to remember. This whole unit here is all pretty much reverse thread, meaning uh, to the left it's going to be tightening it, to the right it's going to be uh, loosening it. Okay, you have the two uh, eight millimeter studs also holding the stator. People get the idea that actually this rotates. It actually doesn't. It stabilizes right onto the timing cover. Do you remember when we showed you the timing cover last time? We showed you this is the indicating mark right here uh, for it to point. And you can see here on the groove, engrave. Here we go. There it goes. Coming. It's upside down, but it faces this way. You want that T. There's the T we were talking about. You want that T to pretty much align with. That's why we call this a timing cover. The line right there. So the T would. I'm actually face right there. See, oh, it's very, it's very magnetic. That's why I didn't want to put it in. When you first break it off, the first time it's gonna be harder, but the second time around is actually easier. So that T right there lines up with this right here. That's pretty much. That's why this is called a timing cover. This whole uh, removable piece here, and that actually has the most screws. There's about seven uh, U screw size uh, pattern. I mean, U pattern screw. They're all eight millimeters, so. We're going to use the same ones. So first of all, uh, in order, we're going to go ahead and take parts from this again to upgrade our 180cc. So we're going to reuse pretty much everything here from the flywheel to the 12 pulse stator to the timing cover. Uh, but the left crankcase is going to be replaced and the right crankcase is going to be replaced. So we don't have to worry about those two uh, bigger components. Uh, again, how you can tell this is uh, DC. DCs are 12 poles, so you can count them. When people tell you to count your uh, stator, this is what they're trying to tell you. If you open this up to this point, you can count it easily. You go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. See, so that completes the whole 12. So 12, pretty much remember 12 DC. Uh, that's pretty much means there's a DC uh, uh, CDI uh, unit. And also you can tell if you're gonna replace the CDI unit, it's actually bigger. This is a CDI unit right here. See right there? It's much bigger than the AC. The AC one is probably half the size. So you can't interchange them. Uh, some, they make universal parts that you can use for AC and DC, but rarely it's either mostly for AC. So you wanna make sure that it's actually compatible for DC because your stator is DC. So here we go. And remove this, the 12 pulse stator here. And these are the screws that I want to show you the sizes too because a lot of people just put the screws in they kind of pause it but I think it's good to see what's kind of screws in there in case you ever forget or lost you can reference back to this video okay so we got that there we'll put it back in this place in just a second and then this is like a magnetic receptor as well it has like a magnet part and um, since it's magnet the screws actually can stay in put so this takes same amount uh, two screws. I'm gonna give you a close shot here. See there. Try to get focused there. There we go. Okay. There we go. This is the screw that pretty much is the size for these ones. You could put back in there as magnet. See. Okay. So put that in there. Leave that intact. Take out this wire here, just kind of rib it in there. Okay, now something else is holding it as well. We have another longer one. This is that almost, this screw size is almost about a good three and a half to four inches. So we want to take that off as well before we can remove the complete stator. So let me go and give a little bit more room here that way you can see it. it's coming off nicely again you're gonna have a little bit more tougher time when you first uh, break this out you can hear it pop but everything here has already been pre loosened just for demonstration reason okay. still quite a bit of length there we go so here we go we're moving it so you can see how longer the screw is and you can actually take your screw holder again that way you don't lose any of your screw and keep it in the box in a pattern so we're going to see, like, get that box out here Got the box here. 
and we're gonna make a, a notation here. Again, this is pretty much, we're gonna go ahead and start taking off next. It's gonna be uh, pretty much our timing cover. Timing cover, there we go, I just rewrote it. Uh, the flywheel doesn't really have much. Um, pretty much, this is considered a flywheel, so you can see here, there wasn't really another screw other than the bolt, bolt and washer, so we can keep that in place there. Again, we're gonna put this back, the two screws here from the stator, put back into the slot, that way we won't lose it. And we can move the whole wire piece now. Put that right back on the ground area. There we go. And then we're gonna go and put this here, uh, pretty much facing anywhere, just to make sure that it doesn't really um, you know, lose itself. So we'll just hang it right here on the side of our box here. All right. The so next we're gonna do is kind of start removing the the timing cover, and that again is gonna take a U shape. So we're gonna get to that right now. So here we go. The first, uh, where we're gonna remove it is there's one screw right here. So you can see it's almost in a U-shaped pattern here. Okay, we'll put in the first uh, box is starting from the left and work our way back up to the right, kind of looping down. Okay, there we go. The next one is all the way right here, tucked in this corner. I could probably set this down, that way you can see the whole overview now. And then you can see more of the screws as we go, right there. Okay. All right. So you can see how long it is compared to the other one that we just took out first. See how short that one is. So they're different sizes. It's seven screws just like our um, transmission cover. And they're going to be in different lengths. So the next one right here is right here in the lower bottom. So we get that one out. And that one's even longer. Alright. Next one here. So we're just coming along nicely. And you're gonna be putting blue uh, Loctite in all of them when you reinstall it. And you can tell there's some blue Loctite residue previously from it. So here we go now. Got two more to go after this and that should complete our seven screws to remove our timing cover. And then what we're going to do is start prepping everything up, all the gaskets, so we're going to go and start uh, putting the bearings and stuff inside our new uh, crankcase, as well as installing the cylinder head, which we're going to show you how. But I want to go and expose um, pretty much the timing cover and the left crankcase side, as well as showing you pretty much where the high flow uh, oil pump will be going into. Right now it has a standard on there. So that's it, we got the seven screws removed now, so now we can actually give it a jolt. Kind of shake it a little bit, it should come off. There we go. And that's all these components that you have right here. Uh, this is the wrist pin for your, uh, where the starter actually turns the gear. So I'm gonna put that back in there, that's just wanna kind of show you. Okay, so now you have your, this is your oil seal to prevent it from leaking. You can see here, while I was talking about here, that it sometimes gets damaged. Uh, it's only a one-time use. Normally, sometimes when you remove it, it does get damaged, and sometimes when you try to remove it out, it gets damaged. It's only one time to fit in. It goes in this way, because if you try to uh, pretty much take anything to drill it out, you can only see it only supports half of it, and what that does, it causes that center diameter to rip right off. So we're gonna remove this off and replace it with new ones entirely anyway, so. And here's a spring while I was talking about. What the spring does is just like your grip, you know, it just puts pressure on to the center rubber. That way, when it comes to this part right here, it grips it so it doesn't allow oil to flow freely out from your uh, 
uh, you could call this the shaft. But this is actually from one of the, uh, pretty much if you're facing me, it's the right hand side of the crankshaft. So we're gonna replace that. Your gasket here, normally it's worn out, but this one, again, we just pretty much put in for installation uh, demo reasons, so that's why it's still fairly clean. We can actually use this again, but normally it shows a lot of water damage and stuff already, if it's already been motor oil in there or already run. So we'll put this out here aside, you can see. Uh, this is pretty much where your oil goes into, and it flows in this way. And when you drain your oils right here in the bottom, so you can see here there's room for that little spring that when you actually catch your oil, the, the spring drops as well as the filter. That's where it sits right here. So all this unit right here has to be protected so the oil doesn't get into your stator, of course, because that's the drying mechanism. So there we go. That's pretty much the cover for your timing cover. Okay, the next one we're going to take out is your starter clutch itself. And this one requires a special sock as well. Remember again, it's a reverse thread, so lefty-loosey, righty-tighty doesn't apply. So you're going to need what's called like a castle nut. And make sure if you do order one, make sure it has a good length and size. Because sometimes some of these are shorter for certain model uh, scooters or motorcycle. So you want to do is make sure that you get one that actually has a good length. This one's good, i say about maybe almost good two and a half to three inches. So that will clear this whole base here that you need to actually get out. You can see here the reason why it has little teeth there. We call it a castle nut. You can see it looks like a little mini castle. Uh, you have the little indent here on the nuts, and that's you'll need this teeth to lock into it. So I'll show you right now. We're gonna put it in, and we're gonna turn it to the left, and you're gonna need an impact uh, driver for it as well. So we're gonna go and put an impact driver on it because it's it's tied on there. There we go. It fits your impact driver, and you want to turn it to the right. You're gonna set the impact driver to the right because again it's reverse thread. Okay. So there we go. Okay, you can see it from this angle better how it's gonna be. There you go, see? And we're gonna go ahead and give it a good, again, it's gonna be not going backwards uh, left, it's gonna go toward the right. So here we go, it's gonna twist it there. There we go, it's coming off, see that? Okay, once you get off a little bit, you break it, you can just go ahead, I mean, break it loose. Uh, you can just go ahead and do it by hand. Just kind of twirl off and then there's a washer with it. See, there's the washer. The bevel side, the smooth side, it faces the washer, and then the flat flush side uh, faces pretty much the sprocket of your um, uh, starter clutch. Again, the starter clutch here is only a three, uh, a three roller, and what we're gonna do is upgrade to what's called a heavy duty starter clutch, and that has required at least four. And then there's the Woodrow key here. The Woodrow key is very important. It sets all the components here to align so it doesn't actually slip off as well, but also is the timing. So you can see here, it only comes out when there's a Woodrow key alignment to it. See it? The Woodrow key indent here. And these, there's two Woodrow keys here. Let me face it towards you. See that? That's the Woodrow key right there. And in order to remove those ones out, you just take a Phillips and a metal uh, hammer, a regular uh, hammer, not a mallet. It's too soft. And you can just kind of put it on one corner. And it's like a little U-shaped canoe. Uh, it has to be flushed back accordingly because it's very precise. If one edge is actually tilted outward more, you won't be able to fit back any of your uh, components like pretty much relies on is your uh, starter clutch as well as your, see everything has that timing groove. See right there, see that little thing? And your flywheel. So next we're going to do is remove the, the splash guard for your oil pump and then you can see Pretty much I'll compare it so you can see the difference between a standard uh, oil pump and a high flow oil pump, which is much thicker. So we're going to go and remove the splash guard here. Gotta get the resolution better for you. There we go. Alright, coming down. Okay, since these are nuts and bolts are pretty unique, you normally would remember where they go, but just in case, I would definitely uh, put them back in his housing. Just prevent, these are the size of the screws, by the way. You can see what kind of screws they take. If you ever get uh, lost, just hang it up on there. Just hang it up on the side of my, uh, the rest of my base here. Okay.
Okay. All right, though we don't lose them. Again, this was pretty much for the castle nut. For pan, right in there. And this one's for our flywheel. We'll put that in there as well. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and remove pretty much the oil chain as well. And this one takes a 10 millimeter. So let's go get a 10 millimeter on there. Okay. All right, now it's loose. Now there's a sprocket for the oil pump and it, the oil pump does have this little shaft there and it's actually a special uh, indent here so it's not a perfect circle. So never force this sprocket into the shaft because the shaft has to face a certain way. And then you can see here, I'm gonna pull out the sprocket. There you go, see, that's for the oil pump. It rotates this and it, there's a mechanism here that keeps on uh, cycling the oil. So now we're gonna take on the oil pump and then you can see the difference. I'm gonna go and compare it to you, the one that we're gonna put in for our new um, left side crankcase for the one ACC, it's a high flow oil pump. You don't necessarily need a high flow oil pump for a 171, uh, but you do need it for 180cc and above and as well as a starter clutch, which recommends that any kind of big bore kit, you want to upgrade the, the starter clutch to a heavier duty starter clutch because they will wear out over time. Uh, it's just a lot of more power put into it. Okay, so now you can see here, this is what oil pump looks like. You can see this one's a standard one, it's very thin. It's probably less than maybe, uh, probably a good half an inch. And the one that we're gonna replace with it, the high flowing oil pump. It's a Castle brand. See the difference here. See, this is the Castle one. A very expensive oil pump, by the way. You can probably get a high flowing oil pump for half the cost. This was almost about a good $50, $60. Uh, and this one right here, you can see the difference. And it comes with Allen, Allen thread uh, lug nuts to put in there. Uh, sorry, stud, stud nuts. Okay, so you can see the difference here if I lay them all flat in the same box. You can see it's almost a good centimeter. It takes all the space it needs. And then the Allen wrench, you can tell some of it's a high flowing oil pump, not just by the thickness of it. Diameter's the same, but you can tell what kind of Allen uh, wrench it uses. Sometimes the maker for the high flow oil pump looks exactly the same they made by TX. But if you look at the screws that it provides to you, since it actually has to raise up a little bit more thicker, it's gonna use an Allen wrench to dip in more, so be able to flush the screw in, so it can actually use what was a screw height, now it's flush with the whole uh, oil pump. So this is what I call a high flow oil pump, and this is pretty much your standard oil pump, so you can see the difference now. Okay, we'll put that aside, we're gonna take out the chain. This is our oil chain here. And then we're gonna go ahead and take out the, the sprocket here that pretty much is geared from the starter. And we could have took out the starter uh, earlier too, but you don't really necessarily have to do it right now. And uh, we're gonna get to that eventually. Uh, because we're not gonna reuse the starter here, we're gonna actually install a, pretty much a high torque starter. So here you go, we just remove the sprocket that turns the starter. And then here you go, the, the wrist pin that holds the starter uh, for the starter gear. So these two mechanisms right here. It turns the big one, which turns the small one, which then turns this mechanism over here, which I can show you real quick here. Here we go, we're gonna put it in. Again, if these uh, uh, Woodrow screw were not in line, this would not even allow you to pop right in. So here we go, I'll kind of give it a twist. See how it put there? The wrist pin holds it in place. So what happens was, it, when this turns, see that? It turns everything else. So the starter kicks it off, it starts every the gear process. It also runs the oil pump, which is low right here. The oil pump sprocket turns as well, which also cycles the oil. So it all works together in one uh, rotating mechanism. Okay, so there you go. We're gonna go ahead and take everything off again. Take this or whichever this one off comes first easily. Okay. Oh, the thing about also uh, when you do buy a high torque uh, starter, uh, it does come off. These are two pieces. It doesn't usually come with the sprocket. You can reuse your same. It's called a sprocket right here where all the teeth are. So you can take it off like this. Just be really careful. Do not uh, make sure that these rollers do not resitate back inside because it's a very hard. Some of the, uh, the starter clutch won't allow you to have any kind of a loop area to actually move these rollers back in. So it's a pain in the, the rear to actually 
uh, try to res resuscitate these back in, okay? So if you do have that problem, um, just be careful when you're, you know, laying it down. Don't, don't knock it off too hard because you don't want these rollers to come right in and there's no way to reset it back other than trying to pick on these. Because what it is, is it's held in with some kind of like a little mechanism uh, bar here that puts pressure on the roller so it doesn't just come out. But you can, you know, these are really, you know, if they're like 60% already in, it's easy just to poke them out. But if they're 50-50, the chances are they might not go back in so easily without having them. You have to shift this over here in order to get the rollers tucked back in. And that just becomes a pain, especially when you have a variety of them. Uh, pretty much you turn it to the left. So a lot of people try to force it in, see how it doesn't go in. See, they won't go in. And some people keep on rotating them. So what you want to do is you want to turn it to the left, like I just did right there. And see, and it just saw, uh, and this thing can actually come out back and forth again. So just remember again, rotate to the left once your rollers are nicely tucked in as much as you can. So again, be careful again, knocking out those rollers, cause especially Beijing brand, uh, for some reason they put a little plastic protective cover, but when they ship it to you, sometimes those protective cover comes off and you're gonna spend a couple hours trying to pick on that if you don't have the proper tool. Uh, just try to reset those, uh, they call them the um, roller. This is a, uh, we're gonna use it for a 20 sprocket. So here, now here we go, we're gonna go ahead and put that in. Now we're gonna go ahead and take off our uh, left crankcase, uh, which I'm sorry, we're gonna, yeah, take off left crankcase. So we're here now. So all the, the left crankcase has very little screws. There's only two screws here. I can already tell you right here. Uh, so I pretty much made the holes for the left crankcase already you can see there there's two screws that's holding the left crankcase together so if you ever wonder how many screws are here or there here just remember it's right here on one side of the oil pump for not the oil pump itself studs but it's right there okay there we go that's the length of the first one we'll put it right in there i try to poke the hole in the same diagonal diagram. And the other one's just a little above it on the other side. You can see there's right here. That's one right there. Okay. And that's actually almost on the outside. And that's the only two really that's holding your uh, uh, left crankcase pretty much on. Everything else uh, sits on top of it, which adds more support later on because we, we already took it off. So it, it, it's actually a lot more holding it, but for the two that's currently holding it right now, it's just those two at the last part when you take everything else externally off from this interior. Okay, here we go. There we go. We're going to go ahead and give it a good uh, jig out. You can see here, this is pretty much where the, the starter uh, teeth is right here. It's right out there. And we'll remove that uh, at a later time. But I just want to go ahead and show you how to remove the left crankcase part. You do have to take your off your cylinder head, of course, because you can't split the two once you have the cylinder unit uh, still on to the stud here. This whole unit right there. Okay. There we go. Oh, by the way, these are dowel pins. It's the same kind of dowel pin size as your uh, CVT and transmission area. So these ones are eight millimeter versus the 10 millimeter that's actually onto your um, cylinder head unit. Those are the only one that's a 10 millimeter that you're gonna be using. Okay, there we go, it's coming off. There we go, that is your left crankcase. Back it out a little bit so you can see the whole wide view. There we go. All right, now in order to remove your stroker from the other side, it's held in with pretty much, like I said, the starter gear. So we'll have to remove that. You can see the other side as well. So you can see the indent for the oil pump. Uh, it's placed right there. You can see it's actually made room here that you can actually fit a high flowing oil pump on that one. Okay, so we're going to want the dial pins. Be careful with these dial pins. If you lose them. There's usually only two sides per every uh, uh, section of a crankcase. So we'll put this down here. Okay. Remove the dowel pins ahead of time. We'll put the dowel pins into a bucket here. Hang this back up. Oh. Just put it in there. Okay. Okay, here we go. Now you can see here the starter is almost wanting to 
jiggle out, we can actually just remove it easily with just, there's only two screws that removes it, it's right there. You can see right there, the two screws, the same eight, eight millimeter screws. And if you want to, I can show you how to remove it right now. There we go. And since these are not really tied anything, if you want to put the screws back into the crankcase, that way you don't lose the space. We're going to remove it again anyway because we're going to take it from uh, this crankcase uh, onto the other one. So there we go. There we go. This is it. This is how you remove the starter here. See, it just comes right off. Yep. All the screws just fell on. Okay, we're going to go and just put that back here. That way it won't lose its place. Yikes. Okay, that'll be out of our way because we're going to go in and remove next. Is first of all, we got to take our uh, gasket nicely out. Uh, hopefully, we didn't crush it again. These would not be reusable if they were to be ran uh, one time already because sometimes they get like oil into them. So, you definitely want to replace these. Uh, this one's still fairly new. We can set this aside here for all our other components. There we go. So it goes a certain way where there's an open side. So you can see here, it's it comes in one piece, which you have to cut sections of it. And there it is, the piece right there. It goes right there. You'll have to cut the opening for your pistons to come out as well. It's always good to actually put the dowel pins here before you cut it. That's a trick right there. Uh, you put the dowel pins in place. What I mean by that is, let's it. I'll get you some dowel pins. Okay, so what you do is you put your dowel pins to lock it in. There you go, there's one. And there's a, the other dowel pin. Usually they go in opposite corners. And here's another dowel pin. So once you put your dowel pins there, it holds your gasket in place. Then you just take a pair of nice scissors or razor blade, whichever you prefer, and just cut it accordingly to where it ends at. So you can see this one ends right there. So you'll cut it right there, or else you'll have like a piece here. It's just. Well, definitely you can't have the piece here because your piston needs to come out, but uh, the, you know, they they pretty much fabricate and manufacture like that So you just have to make sure you cut it uh, Specifically to fit your uh, crankcase precisely So That's it now. We got it now. We're gonna go ahead and remove pretty much the starter uh, gear that's holding this Crankshaft because we're gonna not reuse this, but we are gonna take its uh, Woodrow key from it. So here we go And there's a special tool again to reuse this and I'm going to show you how that actually works. 